Hey guys, what is up? Christian here, uh, checking in from my quarantine, hopefully to your quarantine. So right off the bat, I want to point this out, there is a hole in the ceiling, uh, but everything's okay uh, as of now. Um, but just wanted to say a few things to you guys. First of all, uh, we miss you. Uh, definitely, we haven't had Lighthouse in, it feels like about three eternities, but I think it's only been, two, we missed two weeks, I think. Um, I don't know, uh, but we miss uh, doing Lighthouse, miss uh, playing Grog, uh, throwing dodgeballs at your guys' uh, heads, and uh, learning God's Word. It's a bummer we haven't been able to have it, uh, but I do hope you guys are uh, quarantined, because I think it is uh, the most safe thing to do um, at this point. I hope you are safe, I hope you are finding constructive things to do, maybe more so than watching uh, Friends on Netflix for the 94th time. Um, for me, as far as I try to be constructive, did some puzzles, played some online chess, watched some educational podcasts, YouTube videos, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I just want to share a few thoughts with you guys uh, kind of about uh, the coronavirus, uh, the pandemic, and kind of how we, uh, as followers of Jesus, should respond uh, to this situation or, or, or others like it. Uh, so as I was thinking about it today, one kind of phrase uh, just kept kind of going over and over uh, in my mind, and it shows up in, in, in Hebrews 6. It's talking about how Jesus, the hope we have in Jesus, is an anchor for our souls. Jesus, the hope we have in Jesus, is the anchor for our souls. And that's awesome, beautiful imagery about how how when we hope in Jesus, we can't lose. There's nothing that can take that away. That hope is always there, firm and secure. In fact, I'm going to read from Hebrews 6. Look, my Bible's already at Hebrews 6. Get on my level. Uh, this is uh, Hebrews 6, verse 19 and 20. It says this. It says, We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters into the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where Jesus who went before us has entered on our behalf and if you remember middle school lighthouse just a few weeks back we did a three-week uh, kind of sermon series on hebrews and our first lesson in that uh, was about how jesus is our great high priest jesus died he rose and he is alive to this day in heaven at the right hand of the father interceding for us and that is the hope that we have and I was kind of thinking about what an anchor is what an anchor does to a ship it holds it in place and I was just kind of thinking about you know water and ships and I was reminded of another place uh, earlier in the New Testament uh, where Jesus talks about you know waters and storms and it's in Matthew 7 and if you remember even further I hope you remember uh, middle school lighthousers uh, before our little series on Hebrews we did a sermon series on the Sermon on the Mount which encapsulates Matthew 5, Matthew 6, and Matthew 7. At the very end of Matthew 7, uh, Jesus talks about the wise and the foolish builders. And he describes the foolish builders as the one who hears, he, he says, those who hear my words and do not put them into practice. It's like the one who builds their house on sand. And when the waters rise, and when the storm is blown, and when the wind gets crazy, that house falls. And there's a great crash. But then he goes on to explain, the wise builder is the one who hears these words of mine, knows Jesus, knows his word, knows the gospel, and puts it into practice. The wise builder is the one who hears my words and puts them into practice. That is the one who builds their house on the rock. And when the storm came and the wind got crazy and the current was rising, that house stood firm. And as I was thinking, this, this coronavirus, this pandemic is kind of an example of what Jesus is describing. When, when the storm is, is crazy and the wind is blowing and, and, and the water level is rising, that's kind of what this coronavirus is. It's, there's a lot of uncertainty out there. Whether you're following Jesus or not, there's, there's a lot of questions, a lot of anxiety, a lot of worry, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of stuff going on that we're not sure about. But as followers of Jesus, we have this hope that anchors our soul. And then with Matthew 7, I want you to think, only you can answer this, 
Who are you putting your faith? Who are you putting your hope in? Are you putting your faith in, in, in maybe doctors, uh, healthcare workers, maybe uh, 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 politicians? Um, or are you putting your faith in, putting your faith, building your faith on the rock that is Jesus, the anchor for our soul, firm and secure? Um, so I just want to encourage you guys, um, moving forward, I, I think it, it kind of depends on who you ask, uh, but uh, I would think that this uh, this lockdown is going to continue for at least, at least two more weeks. Um, I would encourage you just to be in the Word. Uh, just open it right up to the middle. I landed in Isaiah. But just jump into Psalms. I, you don't have to do anything crazy. You don't have to do a, you know, an exegetical commentary on, on Deuteronomy. Just jump into Psalms. Read just a few verses. That's all I'm asking you to do. And I guarantee you, you will be encouraged and reminded of who sits on the throne, of who is in, in charge, of who is in charge of things. Sorry. And it's just going to be a huge encouragement. I guarantee it. Uh, I just opened to Psalm 47, uh, verse eight. It says this. This is nothing spectacular, but this is this is good stuff. It says uh, again, Psalm 47, verse eight. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne.